In this video, Nathan Lively from Sound Design Live is going to walk us through what subwoofer alignment is, why it's important, and how you can align your subs the hard way or the easy way. I hope you enjoy our conversation. We're looking at a sound system from the side here, and we're just looking at one frequency range where these two guys are interacting. So if we have this source and then this source, if we don't do anything, then there's just gonna be this isosceles triangle and the sound is gonna go up here. And yes, we do see sound going down here, but now one of our sources is a whole wavelength out of alignment. So ideally, we wanna take this area of summation that's up here and push it down here. If we just take everything out and just focus on that shape, then what we can do is actually like rotate this triangle down towards the audience. And so in these next pictures, that's what I'm gonna do. So here I've rotated that entire triangle down. And now you may have noticed that the triangle started at the subs and now has been pushed back. And so if I physically move the subs back here, instead of you know using electronic delay, I physically move the subs. Now, when we do that next prediction, we'll see that we've actually shifted that area of summation that earlier was up here, and now we've moved it down into the audience. How do you determine what that delay time should be? Right, that's the question, right? How do, how do we use the right amount? Um, and we could try to do this by ear, and there are methods for that. None of them have ever worked great for me. So the method that we've already hinted at a little bit already is using distances, converting those to time, and then using that to figure out what the delay value should be. And I have built a tool for that. It's called Subaligner. And why don't we just test it out right now using this example? Um, we've got some Meyer Sound Milo, some Meyer Sound 650P. I've picked them specifically because if we just turn them on with no processing, we're gonna have a little bit of a problem here. So let's go ahead and look at a prediction at 100 Hertz. Some of you have already spotted the problem here, <laughs> which is that our uh, you know, big area of summation is going off here above the heads of the audience, and we have this big area of cancellation that's going off down here. So, so we wanna figure out how to fix that, right? We wanna move that. And it's pretty easy. We just need the distances to each source from our alignment position. Here, I've written them down in feet. This is what Subliner looks like when you open it up. It wants to know the brand, model, and the processing preset. And for speakers that are just uh, self-powered, there might not be any processing preset. And so we're gonna pick Meyer Sound, that's what we're using today, and we have a array of Milo, and we're using no processing preset, which Subliner calls native, native mode. How many of them do I have here in the room? Well, I have six up here and then two subs. So six, and then what's the distance? And this says distance to front of house, distance from front of house, because I'll go out on a limb and say nine times out of 10, it is perfectly fine to use front of house as your alignment position. There's also these little uh, pop-ups here to help you remember what it is asking you for in each of these fields. Okay, so I've measured my distance here. It's 48.87. And I make sure that I have feet selected. And then it's not 1100 LFC, it is 650P for the subwoofer. And I have two of them, and the distance is 47.74. And that's it, it's gonna give me a suggestion. It says, hey, for the subwoofer output, you need a polarity inversion and 0.22 milliseconds of delay. So we can just go ahead and try that out. So I'll go over here, open my output processor, put in the delay and uh, polarity inversion. Now I'll go back over here and we'll look at that prediction. Looks pretty different, right? Where this black arrow is, is where previously we had cancellation and where the white arrow is, we had summation. And now we flip those two. So now we've, put this you know, big lobe of summation onto the audience pointing at this microphone. And we did that with just distance measurements. Can you show us how we would go about doing it the manual way? Yeah, so I definitely didn't make this method up. I'm not smart enough to do that. 
but I learned it from Merlin Van Veen and he calls it the relative absolute method. He didn't even make it up. He learned it from other loudspeaker manufacturers. So if you look in the user guides for DMB, Coda Audio, Nexo, L Acoustics, and others, what almost all of them say is, you should use an audio analyzer, but if for some reason that's not possible, then you should use this other method, which is what I'm going to explain to you now, which is basically two parts. Number one, you need to discover a processing preset for when two sources are coplanar, equidistant, side by side, grill to grill, however you wanna say it. It's actually a rare case where two speakers out of the box are perfectly phase aligned without doing anything to them. And so you put the two things side by side so that they're equidistant to the microphone, and then you measure them solo, measure main and sub, and then just do whatever you need to do to figure out a way to get them to work together to get the result that you want. And then you're going to modify that preset in the field. That's the second step. So let's say that the difference in relative time for the subwoofer is five milliseconds. So this is my processing preset, basically. So to figure this out then in the field, we need to know three pieces of information. We need to know the speed of sound for wherever we currently are, and you can just look that up with online speed of sound calculators. Marilyn Van Veen has one. And then we need to know our distances. So from our alignment position, what's the difference to the main? What's the difference to the sub? If I subtract main from sub, I've got my difference in distance here, 3.85. And now I'm going to convert that to time. If I just divide by the speed of sound, then we'll get time in seconds, but that's a little bit harder to use. So we wanna get milliseconds, so we multiply it by a thousand. So here is milliseconds. Now we've converted this to time. So this difference that's happening here, when we deploy them in the field, now we've converted that to time, and now all we have to do is add our processing preset that we came up with in the warehouse to this difference in time that we've come up with in the field, and now this is going to be our final answer. And that's exactly what Subaligner is doing. The value of Subaligner is not that it's doing these calculations for you, it's that it has 47,000 processing presets that you might not have already. And, you know, loudspeaker manufacturers will sometimes give you a table with all of their alignment presets, but they're not gonna tell you the alignment between their brand and another brand because they don't want you to do that. And also, you know, it would be thousands of pages long. That's what Subaligner does. So you can pretty easily do it by hand here. If you're going to use this method that I'm recommending, just the relative absolute method, or if you're gonna use Subaligner, you still need to decide where to put the alignment position. And that's what this guide will walk you through. And that's, that's what we've been looking at here. It walks through four of the most common system designs that create problems you know, of subalignment and talks about basically where to put the mic or where to stand and listen or how to choose your alignment position. And it's also in Spanish and Portuguese now.